All right, chemistry, let's talk about what's going to happen on the test tomorrow. I want to review some of the major things from our week 15 targets. These deal with solutions and solubilities. So let me go through each of the targets and show you kind of the main key ideas. Now, this is not going to be the most comprehensive everything in it thing that I'm going to show you, but I'm going to show you as much as I possibly can. But I still recommend you go back and view your old materials and notes and things like that. So it says here, I can model how solutes dissolve in solvents to create solutions. So here is a simple story of that. A solvent is just the substance, a liquid, that does the dissolving. A solute, like a powder, goes in the solvent and it is being dissolved. And then the solution is the result of the two. So you could think of this as kind of like water and hot cocoa, and then eventually you end up with a hot chocolate drink. Now, what we really want you to do is think about this at the atomic level. What's happening down in the atoms? So here over on the left-hand side, we have table salt. This is in its solid form. You can see the little S shown here in the lower right-hand of this. So this, this just means solid. That's the phase that it's in. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this solid sodium chloride. These are just, just crystals of sodium chloride. Notice that there's many just repeating patterns of sodium chloride. This is a pure substance. It's a compound. And we're going to take and put this in water, which is going to turn it. It's going to be aqueous after that. Aqueous or AQ is the phase symbol to mean dissolved in water. So watch what happens when we do that. You probably already know that the salt particles break apart. They dissolve in the water. Now, they don't disappear. and They might seem like they do. They just separate and get really tiny. Now, because they separate from each other, those charges come back. Remember, sodium chloride is made of positive sodium and negative chlorine. And over here in their solid form, there's no charge because they cancel each other out. But over here inside the water, when they separate, those charges reappear because they're no longer attached to each other. They've lost those ionic bonds and now they're free floating around in the liquid. This is what makes this liquid now what we call an electrolyte. It's an electrolyte because it allows the flow of electricity. If we were to test it with an electro probe, a multimeter, we'd be able to see the flow of electricity through this because of those positive and negative charges. So this is what's happening at the atomic level when we dissolve substances in solution. And that is what the phase symbol solid and aqueous means. All right, I can draw an atomic level picture and write a chemical equation for a reaction between two solutions. So we're going to take what we just learned and we're going to kind of add on to it. So here what we have is a double replacement reaction. It's a very simple reaction where we have two substances. Here's our first substance, this green substance. <coughs> it's AB. This is a compound just like sodium chloride, but it's dissolved in water. That's what makes it aqueous. Over here is another compound, CD. It's also dissolved in water. Now, these two substances are going to go through a reaction. We're going to mix them together. That's designated by this arrow. And basically, they're going to switch their partners, as you see over here. So let me show you what that looks like in real life. Here is a reaction where we take lead to nitrate. That's this substance right here, and potassium iodine. These are just two different salts, just like sodium chloride salt. Now, if you remember, if I took lead to nitrate and I dissolved it in water, the lead and the nitrate will separate. Now, I'm only going to draw one of each of these. Please realize and understand that even though this only shows one molecule or one compound, this is happening thousands if not billions of times in the water whatever substance i put in there and dissolved there's thousands and billions of these molecules in there but i'm just showing one of each now remember when they separate their charges return and i just look on the periodic table for what those charges are this is lead two so it's a positive two charge and nitrate which is a minus one charge this is the polyatomic ion now, the same thing over here happens to my potassium iodine. When potassium and iodine get in the water, they separate, and potassium is a plus one charge, and iodine is a minus one charge. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take these two substances, and we're going to mix them together. That's designated by this arrow. So they're going to go into this vat over here mixed together. Now, if you notice what happens, they switch their partners. It's called the double replacement reaction. This lead right here is going to come over and attach to this negative one iodine. We always attach 
positives to negatives. So that lead and the iodine are going to come together. Now, I already gave you the answers up here. Notice this lead is a positive 2 charge, and the iodine is a minus 1 charge. Therefore, when we put them together, there needs to be 1 lead and 2 iodines. Same thing, this potassium and this nitrate are going to attach as well. Potassium being a positive charge and nitrate being a minus charge. Now, if you look at their charges, plus 1, minus 1, you only need one of each. So, one potassium and one nitrate. This is the result of that double replacement reaction, or what happens when we take two mixtures and we mix them together. Notice over here, they start off as aqueous substances. Right here, these are the phase symbols. This is aqueous because it's dissolved in water. This is aqueous because it's dissolved in water. Now, these substances in the end, we need to figure out what happens to them. To do that, we're going to have to describe what their phase symbols are. And we, that leads us to the last learning target. It says, I can predict, using solubility rules, if the reaction products between two solutions will be soluble or insoluble. Sometimes when we mix these substances, they create these things called insoluble precipitates. Oh, so I got to go to this right here. Sorry, this is the same substance we just saw before. This solubility rules right here is what I'm talking about. This is found on the back of your periodic table. It will also be found on the uh, the test tomorrow. But in order to use it, we're going to take a look at these rules right here. So here I have lead to iodine. I need to know if this substance turned out to be soluble or insoluble. To do that, I'm going to look at these two things. And notice I see iodine right here. Things attached to iodine typically are soluble. That means that they stay dissolved in water. However, there are some exceptions. Take a look over here at these exceptions. Because this iodine is attached to lead, right here, you can see that here, that means that it is no longer soluble. It flips it. It's now insoluble. So we're going to put an S. S is insoluble because the substance no longer is dissolved. It's no longer aqueous. It actually creates a solid. And that's what insoluble means. It's a solid substance that came out of the solution. Over here, potassium nitrate, nitrate's right here, and it's soluble as well, and there's no exception, so it doesn't matter if it's attached to potassium. So this substance over here is aqueous. So that's how we use solubility rules. But what is this really saying here? Well, we did a lab earlier on called the solubility rules lab. Take a look over here at the left-hand side. Here we have our first mixed substance. If we go back to our example, that could be like lead to nitrate. Down here, look, there's some clear substance as well. That's like our potassium iodine. Now, they're being mixed. Notice this clear substance is meeting this clear substance. And look, in the middle, we see this yellow substance seemingly magically appear out of nowhere. Well, that's something we call an insoluble precipitate. What happened is, is when these things switched their partners, they created a substance that no longer can be dissolved in water. And that's what insoluble means. Some of you think insoluble means that it can't be dissolved in water, and that's one way to think about it. But in this instance, these two things were already dissolved in water. They double replaced and mixed, and they created a substance that no longer is dissolved in water. And that's another way to think about what insoluble means. And so that's what we see here. Now, this can manifest itself in a bunch of different ways. It could be this yellow clumpy solid that kind of looks like wax. It could be this white clumpy stuff or this kind of little cloud of whiteness or this fog of whiteness here. All of these are what we call insoluble, and the name we give them are called precipitates. And a precipitate is just a solid substance in water. So we designate those as an S. All right, like I said, this is just a very brief review of the things you need to know for the test tomorrow. You should still go back and look at some of the notes and the practices that you've done previously to best prepare. Good luck.